Hi, I'm Vicky Payne, General Practice and Holistic Vet in East Sussex and Veterinary Consultant for Oscars and Breakthrough Dog Food. Today we're talking about a topic called desensitisation and counter conditioning, which is a really, really useful behaviour technique that we can use in dogs that are fearful of an awful lot of different things. I'm recording this in February and that is an ideal time to look at desensitisation and counter conditioning programmes for things like fireworks because it's the time of year when we have the least actual fireworks going on and we have more control over the situation. Um, so I'm going to start talking a little bit about noises and fireworks but then we'll see how we can use these techniques in other problems as well. So there's two parts. So first of all we've got desensitisation. So desensitisation means that the dog becomes less sensitive to to the noises that it was afraid of. Ideally we do this with baby puppies and we stop them getting afraid of, of noises. So as soon as my puppy's ears open when they're about two weeks old if I breed a litter I will start playing them noises. Now this is a selection of my favourite, I'm a bit uh, retro so I've still got a CD player and I play my dog's noises off CDs. So this is my selection of um, noise CDs. So this was a, a specific package. It's got two different CDs in it. This one quite randomly. This is my favourite. This has three different firework displays from 20 minutes of mellow beach fireworks through to a full New Year's Eve in uh, Sydney. And this one, the old sound scary. This has uh, fireworks, thunder, a load of different noises on there as well. But these days you don't necessarily need to go out and find yourself CDs. I'm sure these CDs and similar are still available to buy online. But if you're a bit more modern and more technological than me, you can probably just say smart speaker, play fireworks and it will oblige. I've certainly got a friend who has been playing her baby puppy's thunder just by saying smart speaker, play thunder. And amazingly, they've gone to sleep. So I start with my baby puppies and it not meaning anything. So we'll play fireworks, thunder, gunshots. I think there's spray paint on there a party, all sorts of stuff on there for as soon as they can start to hear and it means nothing to them so this will go on randomly during the day while they're just eating, sleeping, playing until they go to their new home so that's the desensitisation, it doesn't mean anything so if they hear a hoover noise in the background oh that's just one of those noises that they hear it's a real advantage if you're looking at getting a puppy to getting one that's been reared in the home rather than in a kennel environment because they'll be much more used to regular household noises they will be become partly desensitised for you they'll, they'll come without a fear of all of those noises if puppies have been raised in really quiet environments so a really quiet house or they've been raised in a nice kennel block or, or something like that then they can be much more alarmed when they hear normal household noises like washing machines um, and uh, hoovers and things like that. For a dog that is already afraid of something so let's talk about fireworks let's assume we're talking fireworks you want to start with the desensitisation with these noises at a level that the dog doesn't react to them. So initially we're not wanting to have either a positive or negative reaction to these things. So you start playing the CD or the, the noise for a short period of time while the dog's going about its general business and what you're looking for is no reaction from the dog at all. Hopefully then over the days, over the weeks, over the months, and you do need to do this relatively slowly, which is why sort of February, March time is a good time to start, you're going to increase the volume you're going to play it at random times the dog is just like oh it's that noise again there's nothing for me to be interested in or concerned about there are limitations to how well recorded noises work for desensitizing dogs there's no doubt that a lot of dogs are okay with fireworks or thunderstorms or gunshot on the television coming out of a cd player coming out of a smart speaker but they still don't cope as well with those things in real life and i think it's because we can't add all the extra environmental cues that they've become afraid of so with uh, thunderstorms there's a lot of atmospherics, there's changes in air pressure that the dogs can sense, there's, there's changes in the atmospheric condition. With fireworks, they may have become sensitised to the smell of the gunpowder as well as the noises of the fireworks. And obviously we've got the flashing lights as well, which you won't have on a recorded noise. I also do not know whether on a CD or a smart speaker we're picking up all of the high-pitched noises that dogs are able to hear. Certainly even what are sold as low noise fireworks, they will still produce some really high pitched noises in getting those fireworks up into the air, even if they don't produce the big bang at the end. But I think getting, at least working on the noise part of fireworks um, or the noise part of thunder will usually help. So the next part of this training technique is counter conditioning. And this is where we take it a step beyond. So rather than the dog just not being bothered by those noises, which might be appropriate for things like traffic noise or thunderstorms, 
we actually want to change how the dog feels emotionally about hearing those noises. So rather than hearing those noises and thinking, oh God, I'm scared, I don't know what's going on, or just being like, eh, if we can create a really positive emotion to go with those noises, then so much the better. And it's, it's relatively easy to do. So how I would start with a dog, well, I'll tell you how I start with my gun dogs. So my spaniels, who you can see in the background in the pictures, they're all working gun dogs. And it's really important that they're okay with, with gunshot in order to do their jobs. So we start off, as I say, I'll play gunshot noises when they're baby puppies, when they're playing, when they're eating. And that's the desensitisation and it means that gunshot means nothing to them and they're not afraid of it. But they also aren't having a very positive response to gunshot at that point. What I'll need later on in their lives is them to hear a gunshot and think, brilliant, I'm going to go and fetch something. Wow, isn't this amazing? And they think very much the same about fireworks to begin with. So what we will do is we will have uh, somebody with a starting pistol fire that quite a long way away from the puppy. Hopefully the puppy will go, what was that? And I'll go, it was a bang, brilliant, sit, have a treat. So what we're doing is building a connection there. You need to have your noise, the dog reacting to it, being aware of it, but not showing fear. And then you're going to do something that the dog really, really loves. So it could be feed a lump of cheese, perhaps buy yourself some of the breakthrough training treats. They're absolutely ideal for this. So they get a really delicious treat or they get a game. So with my dogs, with my gun dogs, they'll hear the bang and then I'm going to throw something out for them to retrieve. With a pet dog, it could be that you play a tug game, you throw a ball, you throw a frisbee. But you're wanting the dog to notice the sound. What was that? And then you go, it was a bang. Brilliant. Have this toy or have this food. You're going to start with the noise just audible, so the firework sound just audible, so the dog just about reacts to it, just is like, what's that? Is that the thing I don't like? And then you're going to build up the, the level of the noise uh, as the dog gains confidence. You'll know you've cracked the counter conditioning when instead of like being, oh God, what's that noise? Or, or I'm not that bothered. Your dog's like, wow, I heard a bang. That's amazing. Do we get to play now? Um, do I get to have some treats now? Do I get to have some food? And this is exactly what I'll see with my dogs. They do grow out of it a little bit, but the, the first season that they hear fireworks, I'm in East Sussex where we're big into our fireworks. This season, the, the youngest dog, he was like, wow, wow, there's bangs. Is something great going to happen? And the other dogs were like, no, <laughs> they're just fireworks. We're not going to fetch anything. So he had some sweets and, and he settled down and he was like, oh, these are not the exciting bangs then. No. So I actually wanted to condition him the other way. I don't want him excited about fireworks. I want him a bit less excited about those. I'm more alert to the bangs outside. It's really important that when doing desensitisation and counter conditioning that you don't rush it. So if at any point you see the dog start to look anxious, you need to take it back a level. So make your sounds quieter, play them further away from the dog. It's really important that you practice this in different environments because what we can have a situation is the dog is okay with the noises in the living room, in the kitchen. It's a little bit more difficult to take sounds outside, but if you can go out into the garden and make those noises, play them in the garage, play them in the hallway, just about anywhere. Dogs don't generalise particularly well, so you do need to practice these things in different areas. It's really important that the reward, the food or the play comes after the noise. You don't want a situation, if you time things really badly and you're about to give your dog a piece of cheese or a nice breakthrough training treat and then you play the bang and the dog goes, oh, what was that? You can actually make them afraid of the treat. So they can be like, oh, why has she got the treats out? Does that mean the nasty bangy things are going to happen? And we don't want them thinking that. We want them thinking bangy things, way I'm getting treats. Not, oh, treats, does this mean, oh, does this mean there's going to be horrible stuff going on? And really, you know, that, that is it in a nutshell. Desensitisation and counter conditioning is an incredibly powerful tool. It's a really simple tool and you can you can adapt it to just about anything. So it could be, as I say, fireworks and thunder would be the two biggies that, that I would work on with a lot of clients. But you can use it for other experiences. So getting in the car. We ideally want our dogs to love going for car rides and a lot of them don't to start with if they've not had good car ride experiences. So just the same, we'll get them used to being around the car, getting in and out of the car, then eating in the car, playing in the car. 
or to build up those positive experiences. It might be the hoover. <laughs> the big thing there is not to force the puppy to go and investigate the hoover, but to let him investigate the hoover and then when he does, tell him how brilliant he is and give him the food reward or play with him. Building up to the hoover, just, it starts off just silent and then you turn it on and then maybe you turn it on and move it around. But that could be over the course of a couple of weeks that you get them used to that. We can use it around dogs and people. So again, in a reactive dog, we want to go from a situation where we, we go from a situation where the dog is unhappy around other dogs and probably wants to lunge and bark and then hide behind you. We then want to, with desensitisation, so getting them used to dogs at a distance that they can walk around and concentrate on you, concentrate on playing maybe a tuggy game with you or taking food treats from you without being too interested in those other dogs. But ultimately, if you time it just right and with some of the techniques that we can use for reactive dogs, you'll actually change their emotional state. And again, I've seen this with one of my dogs. Now, if we're walking and a dog goes past her barking, she walks past it and then she looks at me and wags her tail. He's like, I went past that dog and I didn't bark or anything. Can I have a treat? So far from seeing other barking dogs now as a threat and something to be afraid of, uh, she actually sees them as a predictor of getting to have some really good treats. There are obviously the if you're having a, if you've got a dog that's generally nervous, then it may be beneficial to look at some dietary modification through breakthrough to put them in a state of mind where it's easier for them to learn new things. And obviously, if you're using the breakthrough, then the progress training treats the things to use there. Otherwise, it's important we've got loads of advice on the website. Um, so there's quite a few resources on there on our Facebook and Instagram pages, uh, LinkedIn, if anyone's still using LinkedIn and also YouTube. And there is also a helpline that people can contact if they've got more specific behaviour problems to deal with. But yeah, so desensitisation, counter conditioning, great long words, actually quite a simple technique and one that can make a big difference to your dog's life.